Hello, welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Right now, the question I'm answering is what's in the box in regards to this? This is Code Monkey Going Bananas, a board game published by the very popular Code Monkey um, site, I guess. Um, it's a STEM programming course that you can take online. They have various pieces of software, and it's a whole coding program called Code Monkey. if you find it online at CodeMonkey.com. This is a board game produced by them where you are going to play monkeys trying to collect bananas done through programmed movement. Now, I will say it's, I'm so used to buying hobby board games and everything. I did find this a little shocking. Now, I know this game is not coming out until later this year. This may be a prototype copy. I'm not certain either way. Now, I do have to thank Code Monkey for sending me a copy of this to review. So I'm not positive this is production quality, but I think it is. You got nothing on the back of the box. So that just is striking to me. But we'll get to see what's inside the box, which is what we're excited about tonight. We're going to take a look inside the box, and I'm sure everyone's going to be watching this video because you don't know what's in here without watching me, so welcome. All right, here you have the box for Code Monkey Going Bananas. So this plays two to four players, should take about 20 minutes, ages seven and up. I'm going to guess you could probably go long, younger than that, depending on your kids. I am cracking this open for the first time. I've not seen the contents of this box before, and I got to say I'm already impressed. That is some neat looking components in there. There's lots of wooden bits here. You got some tiles, nothing to punch. We got some standees and a bunch of dice. So we're gonna take a look at each of these components in turn. I'm gonna start off with the dice. They come in a variety of colors here. Oh, it's in a resealable baggie. Dice. Oh, I love this one die. Okay. So we have three yellow dice, three red dice, three blue dice, and three green dice, and I am guessing those are probably in the player colors. But what I really dig is there is a D6 here with, is it all of those colors? We have red, blue, and yellow only? Oh, they're different amounts. Okay, so you have red one and four, blue two, three, and five, and yellow six. I dig this, I just like the difference. It's a clear die, the big one pip, and different colored pips on each side. That's neat. I like that. Other than that, you are looking at standard six-sided dice. Oh, that color didn't go very well. We'll use this one. Standard six-sided dice with rounded corners. They're dice. They're pretty for dice. They're dice. We're going to put those away. All right. Next, I have no idea. We have metal washers. Metal washers, so there might be something we have to assemble here. We have a baggie of metal washers, which probably go with these tree bits. I honestly have no idea. All right, let's take a look at these. These are the cool looking bits I saw. I'm like, oh, those look neat. Oh, we have Broken Monkey. So, Code Monkey, sending these out. You know you're going to have to watch for this. We have a monkey, and here is his tail. So that's disappointing to see. Um, this is, it looks like it was glued on. So it didn't break, it just the glue let go. So I should be able to glue that back on. Hopefully the tail isn't important to play, like you don't need to hang this on anything. So I'm actually gonna put this aside. We're gonna put little blue monkey off to the side and we'll try to fix him later. I gotta say, I can see that being a problem. Like look at how these are designed. So here is a yellow monkey, cute face with the tail on it. But I can see how that would get easily broken off. So there is uh, an issue I do see with this game. The monkeys, while cool that they're not flat and have tails, might have an issue with getting broken off. Then we have a pink monkey, whose face is a little hard to see. And we have a green monkey. Odd choice in the color of the brown on the green, too. Next, we have these really cool palm trees that have numbers on them. They're already assembled, they're made of wood, nice thick wood. They stand up fairly well. They can be knocked, but we have six of those. Yeah, we have six palm trees that we can stand up and put onto hexes somehow. So those are cool. Those don't feel like they're gonna break at all. A little disappointed in the monkey tails. So again, I'm gonna leave my blue monkey out. I'm gonna put the rest of these away. 
And hopefully I don't have to worry about any other monkey breakage. <laughs> okay, the, the leaves on these make it a little annoying to get them back in the bag. And as it is, I may just keep them loose. I still don't know what the... Oh, I bet you I know what the metal rings are for. I bet you you glue them to the bottom of these to make them more stable. I bet you there's actually six rings in here. It's hard to tell. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it'll explain in the rules. So yeah, Mr. Blue Monkey staying out. Then we have some hex tiles that are broken into three, three hexes together. Um, they say Code Monkey. And they have the Code Monkey mascot there, the monkey on the back of them. And these are going to be used to build your board. And I just noticed something, like I had seen pictures of this before. So there are numbers on these. Those are obviously dice pips. So you have obvious dice pips on the maps. And then you would probably stand one of these trees on top of these. And your monkeys would... Uh, do the tails help them stand up? Yes. So the tails serve a purpose there. They help the monkeys stand up. Which, yeah, let's try blue. Yep. All right. So they can stand up on their own, but the tails definitely help. Okay, surprising. These are heavy. These are really heavy. Oh, I think I see what's happening. So, you have, these are magnets. Without even reading the rules, I can tell that you are going to put these on these. And look, you have a way to select various numbers. So I have a standee here that shows a monkey on the back. I'm going to assume it's probably hidden information. I hide this from my opponents and I go, you know, I'm going to move on a four or something. Or I'm going to move this far. Neat. Neat to see. Always impressed with someone doing interesting things with magnets. Though, of course, and now I more understand the age limitation on this. Because you do not want little kids with magnets. So these come with standees. I gotta say, except for the broken monkey, some pretty high-end quality here so we're going to try to slip one of these in see how bad it oh that's easy nice so there you go you have you have your monkey here with the little thing on the side where you can track it and then the disc that you can slide to different spots on here pretty cool then we finally get to some instructions oh and a whole bunch more punch boards cool all right rule book this looks way more complicated than tapestry we're looking at three pages, four pages, five pages, six, seven, nine pages for a programming game for kids. No, we're up to 10, 11 pages, a full 12 pages for a simple coding game for kids. So you can kind of see the game being played here. Uh, text is fairly small. Rule book's a little floopy, but it's, it's usable. Um, I do see a full component list, which is always awesome to see. I do appreciate that. It does show you how to put the hexes together because they go certain ways. I see lots of examples and graphics here. Looks like the monkeys can stand in the trees. That's cute. Maybe you got a robo rally game where you're trying to race to the different trees. It shows different monkeys. Lots of examples. I'm not trying to say it's a complicated game, but this is just surprisingly thick compared to the last game I unboxed. Broken code. So there are different scenarios here. So that's why it's a little thicker than it looks. So we are actually actually looking at eight pages of how to play and then some different scenarios. Cool. Next, we have more hexes with colors that already fell out of this. So I got to say this looks really well punched. Um, here you have your programming, right? So loop, swing, down. And then these, I noticed, would go over the tiles. So we're going to grab a tile. So this would be like to denote a goal or something like blue needs to get there. Uh, there's some banana tokens one two three four, and I put the rules in here, which is silly. So we have the same thing four times it looks like. So we had it in blue, red, yellow, and green. Yeah. So there's one of these with different numbers on them, possibly going all the way up to six. There's a first player token. Oh, sorry, there's a first player token as well. So that's it. That's everything you get in the box with Code Monkey. Going Bananas. No, don't call it Code Monkeys, because that's another game. And don't just call it Code Monkey, because that's another game. This is specifically Code Monkey Going Bananas. Which now I'm going to toss everything back in here. And I do appreciate this little notch, which made getting these... The notch in the corner, which made getting the punch-outs 
easier. So there's some smart design choices made in this game, except for possibly monkeys with flimsy tails. Maybe I just had bad luck. Like I said, it looks like that will glue very easy, so I'm not actually concerned. And it does look like the tails are for aesthetics and for make, helping it to stand up, so not completely needed. Just putting all these back in to make sure everything fits back in the box. We will punch that out. It's a game I am looking forward to playing with my girls. We're going to leave Broken Monkey, poor Mr. Blue Monkey, we're going to leave out so I can repair him before we play. Cool use of ma magnets. So again, that does limit your age. The really neat looking 3D trees, so that's a nice component. We're gonna take one out again just to show it off. That's just cool. That, that is a neat board game component. Very toyerific. All right, monkeys, everything else. We're not gonna bother with this piece anymore. We're gonna put this lid back on. We're gonna move Mr. Blue Monkey out of the way. There you have what you get in the box for Code Monkey Going Bananas. There you have it, what you get in the box for Code Monkey Going Bananas from Code Monkey, uh, a programming STEM learning game for kids. Uh, it says age seven and up. The reason I think that's on there is there are some magnets in here, and you do always have to watch with kids getting a hold of magnets, especially if they swallow them, especially two magnets. Um, so there is that, that issue with it. Now, I will note, when I opened this up, there was a broken monkey in the game. Now, it looks like the glue just let go. There was no snap. So I could just be able to glue that back together with some white glue, but that was slightly disappointing. But the way they're designed, I can see how it happened. Some really cool components for a kid's game in here. Rather toyerific in a way. Like, the monkeys are 3D. There's these really cool trees with a solid base that stand up. Lots of thick cardboard and these magnet based things that look like they're for some type of programming movement where people can hit and select numbers one through six. Now, I haven't played the game. I haven't read the rules. I don't know exactly how that works, but it looks really cool. I have a daughter that is obsessed with science and another daughter that's obsessed with programming. And I think they're both going to dig this. So I'm really looking forward to getting code monkeys to the table. Thank you for joining me for this unboxing. I am Mo Tuzno, the tabletop bellhop, your cardboard concierge answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop One Word, including the webpage, tabletopbellhop.com, where you can find all kinds of awesome gaming content. Now, the main thing we are here for is to answer your gaming questions. So if you've got a question for me, head to that website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or send an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Now, if you dig this video and like to support our continued efforts of making things like this and our other content and answering your questions, hit the button up in the corner. You'll see a link to our Patreon. Thank you very much for joining me. Good night and game on.